We've all heard horror stories about people entering retirement. Maybe you're living one of those horror stories yourself and getting the shock of your life when you discover how low the return on your unit trust has been. This is Tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight we look at the fees around unit trusts. Joining me in Cape Town is Magda Vajitska, who is the chief executive of Signia Group, and Miki Gambale, who is the head of Momentum Wealth Products Development and Marketing. Uh, Magda, let's start with you. You used to be in the unit trust space. You used to be one of those people who charge to massive fees in order to, for people to invest, but you've gone into the exchange traded fund space, the more direct space now. As an actuary, uh, was it an epiphany for you? Um, Bruce, in fact, what we have done is we've gone into the unit trust space rather than exchange traded funds. A big but one. Uh, what we have done is rather than managing the assets on an active basis where you find these extraordinary fees, we have launched index tracking funds within unit trusts at an all-in fee of 0.4% per annum, and that includes VAT. So that makes it you know, the, the lowest investment product available in South Africa at present. Okay. So it's still within the sphere mm. of unit trust, just passive. But, the, but the, the debate around fees, of course, is one that we look at extensively and one looks at some of the higher fees that you can pay for investing in unit trusts. You've done a study into this now, Magda. What are the worst case scenarios that you have found? Well, the worst case scenarios um, are those where investors are actually not aware of the fees that they're paying. So a typical investor, you know, if you look at a typical unit trust, there are five layers of fees. Um, you know, the first two layers are very transparent to an investor, and those are advisory fees, so that's what they pay their financial advisor for advice, and the other fee is the management fee charged by the active asset manager. So that's typically transparent and easy to, access, uh, to assess, and that already comes to roughly two to two and a half percent per annum that you're paying away. But in addition to that, there are three other tiers of costs that most investors don't consider. Um, the first one being uh, quite an insignificant one, being just the hidden fees within unit trust. So it's your audit fees, it's your trustee fees, and your trading costs that are deducted within the unit trust product. And obviously, the more active the product, the higher the trading fees are. And no one ever you know, looks at that. Um, the second fee, which is insidious in terms of how it's disclosed and what an impact it can make, is the performance fees charged within actively managed products. And performance fees usually by by far exceed the basic fees that one pays. So those can be another 1.5% to 2% per annum that you're paying. And that's almost impossible to assess upfront because the disclosure around potential performance fees is you know, always very vague um, and skewed towards the interests of the active manager rather than towards the interest of the investor. And the third fee, which once again no one pays much attention to, is the fee of actually accessing a unit trust. So most investors don't buy unit trusts directly through management companies. They access unit trusts via savings products, such as retirement annuities or living annuities. Um, and they typically access unit trusts via LISP platforms, administration platforms. And those products and those platforms carry yet another tier of fees, and that's yet another 1% plus that you are paying. So but when, we're looking you know, at, five, looking at an, five out of every 100 rand, going five, five rand out of every correct. 100 rand, disappearing in fees. Magda, correct. Broad, broad, correct. broad ballpark. Uh, Miki Gambale, you're a bunch of crooks. Um, <laughs> that's the suggestion anyway. <laughs> um, uh, are, are those fees anywhere near accurate? Uh, 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 Bruce, I, I think from from our perspective, definitely, and if, if I look at the products that we offer on our platform, definitely not. Um, uh, Performance-based fees, definitely, I think, something you should be concerned about and look at very, very closely. Obviously, those do come through in the TERs. Uh, Performance-based fees, not necessarily great. Uh, a lot of people think that it aligns uh, very much so with the active manager. Uh, not always, in many cases it does, but in many cases it doesn't. Um, when it comes to things like platform fees, for example, uh, numbers being thrown around around 1%, uh, probably not. I think in today's more newer generation products, probably starting about half a percent, going down probably to about 20 basis points or 0.2 of a percent. Um, advice fees, obviously very clearly disclosed. Platform fees, very clearly disclosed. Um, 
I think also uh, uh, when it comes to fees and the costs, what, what investors often don't realize is when you do access product via a platform, for example, there are often rebates and those rebates are offset against the platform fee. Either that or what many of the larger platform companies have done, they've actually gone and negotiated clean pricing. So they've gone and gotten discounts for their bulk investing for retail investors. So they are actually giving them a very, very good deal. You see, as a kippy who buys these sorts of products, mm. I'm already befuddled. My <laughs> eyes have glazed over and you've lost me completely. And that's part of the magic, isn't it, Magda Gruzietska, is that we use lots of big words and we confuse people. There's this thing called the total expense ratio, which naively there was a time in my life, I believe, that this was what it cost to buy this particular product. But the total expense ratio is not the total. Not for a moment, is it? No, it's not. You know, the total expense ratio, in theory, amalgamates into the performance fee that one pays. But, you know, that's a historical number of what was paid in the past or in the past quarter. That obviously doesn't give you an indication of what you're going to pay into the quarter that you're going to be invested in. Um, and Mickey, the other thing that I would dispute, you know, I looked at the Momentum platform and, you know, this whole fee disclosure issue. When I tried to establish how much it would cost me to invest in a Momentum retirement annuity, I, after a huge amount of digging, was eventually presented with a 38-page document of fee disclosures. You know, I, as an actuary, spent three hours digging through that document to try and determine precisely what it would cost me to invest in a Momentum RA. And, you know, I can't, to this day, with any certainty tell you that I could, and I've got an actuarial training, I've been in the asset management industry for 20 years, that I can actually, with any certainty, determine what it would cost me if I bought a Momentum RA on your platform, investing in one of your unit trusts. Do you so, respond you know, to that? I Do respond to that, Mickey. Issue. I mean, the guys at the lion's den here, Mark, we'll give him a chance to respond. He has an actuary with a number of years of experience who's looking at your, at your disclosures, and they may as well be written in a foreign language. Look, uh, I suppose it all depends on what Magda has found. I can't really comment on that. I don't, haven't seen the documents. But what I can comment on is what I believe are the facts. And the facts are as simple as this. The first 1.7 million rand, the fees 50 basis points for an RA. It then tears down to 28 basis points. These fees exclude VAT, and that's post 3.5 million. And then above uh, uh, 5 million, it drops down to 23 basis points. So it is very clear. It is very transparent and quite simple to understand with a basic but understanding if it's of math. So I'm not quite then you, sure then where you, that comes from. Then, Magda, he's accusing you of being thick. Um, uh, and I, I assume you're not. Well, Mickey, if, um, you know, if it takes 38 pages of documentation to disclose those three tiers of fees, I despair. Um, but if you do look at the, the fee disclosure document that Momentum publishes, I mean, you know, there are references to termination fees, to switching fees. Um, there's a whole host of other fees that seem to be clearly disclosed. I just don't know how applicable they are to various products that Momentum sells. Oh, do you deliberately um, try so, to befuddle? You know, I don't uh, think. Sorry, sorry, Magda. Do you try deliberately try to befuddle yeah. your customers, or are you a victim of a regulatory regime, Mickey, that requires you to put all that gumph? into 38 pages? Uh, maybe to take a step back, what I'm hearing Mahta say, talking about cancellation fees, uh, exit penalties, etc., etc., those are older generation products. Now, clearly, if you come and ask us what were the costs of different types of investments over their generations, uh, all life companies or product providers would have generational type products. However, our new generation products, and I'm talking products that have been out in the market now for a good 10 years, completely transparent, no exit penalties, no withdrawal fees. In fact, if you look at things like our new savings products, extremely, extremely cheap. We can take, uh, uh, for example, savings investments at 500 rand a month at a fee of 1.25% all in. Yeah. So but, but, but those but are much older they, generations. But there clearly is fees. an issue with disclosure. I mean, in industry-wide. Industry-wide, there's an issue with disclosure. I would say probably the problem with, the indus with, with, with disclosure in industry can also be over-disclosure. So I'll give you a very good example, and let's use the cell phone industry as an example. Uh, do you have a 24-month cell phone contract? I don't know. I think I do. <laughs> now, if I think majority of people do because they get the handset for free and they take out these contracts. That comes with a wad of disclosure. How many of us actually read that? Mm, absolutely. But we're not talking about the cell phone industry. We're talking about saving. We're talking about investing. Correct. I choose to buy a cell phone. It is a lifestyle asset. Investing is protecting my future. Um, the assertion from Magda is you guys, you're dis you generally as an industry, active managers don't disclose adequately. The disclosures um, are, are designed to deceive um, and, and the disclosure and and the fees are just simply too high for any normal person to have any hope of a decent retirement. I think what I hear here is a little bit of we're paying for our sins of the past. 
I think post sort of the global financial crisis, if I think about things like TCF, if I look at where the industry has moved from a financial services perspective, disclosures become a lot more clearer, a lot more transparent, a lot more simpler. In fact, if you think of the three main categories of fees, you're probably looking at financial advice, the actual product fee, and then if you do is assets it still Is it fair for me to be paying fee. three or four rand or five rand, whatever the number is, for an investment service? Absolutely, I think so. I mean, if you think about your bank account, you're probably paying I pay, pay far too, I pay far too much of my bank account. <laughs> Don't even get me started on that one. Magda, um, let's wrap it up in just in terms of the impact of cost. If we can, if we can penetrate the, 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 the magma that surrounds the cost documents, um, when it comes down to costs, costs erode returns over a period of time, 20, 40 years. A substantial amount of what you thought you were saving has disappeared in costs, and that is the real issue that you're trying to highlight here. No, that's exactly right, Bruce. Effectively, this is an erosion of savings and a very significant one, particularly where you do have alternatives such as index tracking products, where frankly you can access the same RA, you know, where you're talking about three rent, four rent, or five rent, you can access exactly the same RA product with an index tracking fund underneath it for 40 cents in the rent. In you times know, of market very, crisis very like we, we, we've experienced recently, you know, crisis, market uncertainty, where index funds would have lost 10 to 12 percent of their value in a very short period of time. Magda, there's some comfort in knowing that I'm paying an active manager um, to take some of that risk out True. of uh, that volatility out of my but fund. But they don't, Bruce. But why should they? If they're investing in an, if you're investing in an equity unit trust, that equity unit trust is 90 five plus percent invested in the equity market the same way that an index tracker is. So your active manager isn't protecting anything. And in fact, active manager takes very aggressive risks. If you look at, once again, sorry to pick on momentum and it's not meant to be a momentum bashing session. But you know, if you look at how much value was destroyed in the ABLE inv investment across ten, the industry, 10% of, ten, ten of one of your value funds was exposed to an African bank, boom suddenly you're 100 rands, 90 rand. Absolutely, but I think what you must remember there is think of what the fund was. It was a value fund, so it struck to, to its roots. Mm -hmm. It was meant to look for deep value investments, and that's exactly what it did when it went to ABLE. Yeah. Last word then, in terms of the erosion of the value of savings by costs. Last word to you on that one, Mickey. Absolutely, I agree. Costs do erode savings. Excessive costs erode savings. Cost is all about value. So you need to understand what is the value you're getting and the value for what you've purchased. If that's clear, if that's easily understandable and the retail public can understand that, then I think we've actually won the battle. It's not about how much it costs. It's about what you get for those costs and do you understand those costs. That's actually what's important. Well, there we have to leave it. Miki Gambale, thank you very much. And Magda Berzitska, the chief executive of Signia Group uh, with Passive Investment. Miki Gambale, head of Momentum Wealth Products Development and marketing on a more active basis. The cost debate is one that will go and run and run and run and hopefully there is more transparency and hopefully you can better out, work out what it is that you are paying for. Thank you for watching. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Till then, good night and goodbye.